It's Sunday afternoon and we just got a telephone call from our friend Scott. He's the guy with that 500 gallon aquarium. Well, he was all excited because he had received a telephone call from a friend of his that had to remove some big corals from his tank and Scott got a good deal on them. Scott's the one with that eight foot long, four foot wide, 24 inch tall, 500 gallon aquarium. So with big tanks come big corals. And that's what Scott tells me that he's picking up today. A large cup coral, a large hydnophoria, and I guess he also got a um, uh, organ pipe coral or possibly some um, green star polyps. So let's go see what he's all excited about. So when adding corals to the aquarium, just like adding fish to the saltwater tank, acclimation is important. There's a process, and it consists of allowing the new inhabitant to slowly adjust to the water that he's ultimately going to be placed in. In addition to acclimation, there's the position of the coral and his compatibility to the other tank mates near him. Part of defining where that new coral is going to be placed is the physical area or amount of space it's going to require to position the new coral. Here we've got to take and start rearranging some of the rocks within the tank to accommodate this large cup coral that we're going to place up in the front corner. And of course that also means finding places for the rocks and boulders that we've moved out of a position to accommodate the coral. I do to help you with. Well, I guess we could put in the uh, big one. How long have you been acclimating? Uh, Over an hour. You have been? Yeah. Uh -huh. Why don't you tell us what you got here first? Uh, we got a monster cup coral, um, a uh, hydrophora, a very large hydrophora, I think I'm saying that right, or hydrophora. Uh, decent sized elegance and a, I believe it's a, uh, a hell, pipe organ coral of some sort. So, get to put them in. Friend was looking to find a home for them, and with large corals, sometimes they're very hard to find places. It just happens that I had space. So, and so as Scott climbs down from above the top of his aquarium and that pair of sifter gobies finds a bounty of bugs in the undisturbed gravel underneath that old rock, Scott's gonna now remove the cup coral out of the container we've been acclimating in, climb above the top of the aquarium, and place it in its new position. And earlier I referred to acclimating the coral, not just to water chemistry, but now that we have allowed that coral to acclimate to the water it's going into, once it's in its new position, we want to try to allow it to adjust or acclimate to the new lighting. This tank's lighting is going to be different from the tank the coral came from's lighting. Whether it be the position, the angle, the intensity, the spectrum, it could be the age of the bulbs. In truth, there are many different factors that come into play. Your best chance is try to duplicate what it was under previously. Well, I think it's kind of obvious that it's not completely illuminated. Mm -hmm. Hello, my name's Jim Stein. I'm with MyFishTank.com. We have a full line of acrylic aquariums and quality aquarium furniture. If you look at those links along the side there, that's the navigation column. There's a link for aquariums, there's a link for stands and canopies, filter systems, and some supplies. There's also a link there for custom aquariums, and if you see the link there for videos and click on it, there's some instructional information that I think you'll find helpful. Thanks! Reef Hobbyist Magazine believes that our hobby, our fellow hobbyists, and the animals in our care are best served by the free distribution of quality information. Reef Hobbyist Magazine provides hobbyists with critical husbandry information with an emphasis on marine ornamental breeding efforts. Reef Hobbyist Magazine is available for free in local fish stores across the country, or you can subscribe at www.reefhobbyistmagazine.com. And with the cup 
Coral, temporarily positioned in its new spot, will now go ahead and lift the Hydnophora out of the container that we've been acclimating it into and lift it up into its new position. which at this time is going to be the bridge on the opposing side of the tank, which fortunately happens to be directly below a 400-watt metal halide lamp. I've seen video of the tank that these corals came out of. It was quite a radical back-and-forth surge within that tank. This tank doesn't have it. What it does have is more of a centrifugal movement where the water gains some momentum before it turns around and moves the opposite direction. So we need to take into consideration water movement around both of these corals because not only is it going to help bring food to the coral, it's also going to help flush debris away. We've now got to the point where we can add the third coral to the tank. We originally believed that this was green star polyps, which is a purple mass with fluorescent green polyps that encrusts whatever it grows on top of. As it turns out, it's Tubapora musica, or organ pipe coral. And what's unique about this type of coral is it grows in little calcareous tubes that the polyp itself grows with inside of. And this continues to grow on top of each other along the lines of bamboo shoots. And we'll now go ahead and add the fourth coral into the tank, which is an elegance coral, a large polyp stony coral, kind of a calcium ice cream cone base with a large fleshy polyp extending from the calcium base. Beautifully green. Via, via, that's all, folks. And with that said, that's the addition of four new corals into the tank. This attractive organ pipe coral. A very large tubastria, or also called a cup or pagoda coral. And if you look close, you can see the individual polyps are beginning to open up. An elegance coral, which is just barely starting to open up now. And a Hydnophora, which is an encrusting coral and a relatively large specimen at that. This is going to be the coral that's going to have the most difficult time acclimating into the tank. Although it's in a very good position, it receives a strong amount of light and a goodly amount of water flow. Well, so it's been a while, and as you see, we just added some new coral. Um, what we thought was a pipe organ is probably a green star polyp. Um, not totally thrilled with some of the placement, but we're going to let them acclimate and see how they adjust. In the meantime, as I said, it has been a while. Uh, nothing's really changed in the tank. No more egg. Uh, fishes are all doing very, very well, and uh, you know, we keep moving forward, of course. Um, and other than that, uh, hope you enjoyed this episode, and hopefully we'll have some new updates. And speaking of updates, make it a point to come on back for part two. Not only can you see how the corals adjusted to their new environment, but we've also got a new fish we want to add to the tank. It's a blonde male nasotang.